morning all. Actually, just coming up the afternoon. Um, let's see how this goes. I've been a little bit in reinvigorated to um, to do another um, another video on the bike, um, and this was thanks to Pete, who's uh, one of the subscribers, and uh, and he's had his bike set up. So I've been having a have a look at how my bike's set up in comparison to his. Now, Pete's stats is, um, he's around about the same sort of weight as me. So it's about 16 stone, but he's tall. <laughs> so, and he rides, his, his experience is he's 16 stone. He rides, he's done a few track days, he's done the ring. So pretty experienced rider. Um, knee down when the conditions are right. Uh, all these comments are actually from on my last video, so please put them himself. But I just thought if people don't read the comments, so I'll do a, a video because this is mainly because he's had his bikes professionally set up, whereas I've just had a fiddle with mine, as you know. Um, and but he rides heavy on the front, which I do as well. So and there's one of the neighbours just popping out. Um, we're, we're still on the lockdown, obviously. They've just started here in Spain. We've got different times of the day with different age groups are allowed out so we keep the, the, the segregation going if that's the right word. But anyway, um, back to the bike. So also the road conditions where he lives, I know where he lives, uh, in the east of England, there it's pretty bad. There's there's it's pretty potholy, there's a lot of lanes. So again, uh, the front end's gonna take a little bit of a pounding. So I'll go through the bits and pieces that he's given me now I'll start with the front because the front he said they've made more changes to the front than they have to the back of his bike so on the front now he's done it from um, eight turns out from fully in but if you're referencing the manual so I had a look at the manual and the manual for the front preload they give it back to front uh, instead of being from full in it's from full out so um, so the hardest setting and um, so they they've given it uh, from um, number of turns clockwise from full anti-clockwise so they're saying four is the standard on the front um, and so I've just I've just managed to in the in the name of the video I've managed to, to make a right mess of my preload adjusters because they're lovely they're the blue anodized I'll show you it before I finish the video and I tried everything I put some tape around it so uh, so it didn't take the coating off I, use different uh, an adjustable um, adjustable spanner so I could get more turn without a, a shorter uh, it's a shorter handle on it so I can get more turns without having to take it off and put it back on again but anyway I've managed to scratch up the coating on it because but uh, the anodized parts are always so um, I don't know why they do it because they look lovely but the minute you start adjusting them the uh, the anodizing comes off and then it looks tatty so really they may as well just leave them in the in the standard silver um, so uh, so looking at his so he's got eight anti-clockwise from fully in eight full turns that is because there's no clicks on the preload um, I will say the street triple RS had the big piston shower forks and the preload was a lot easier because it's at the bottom of the fork and it was with an allen key as well so it was the, you know again not mucking about with spanners and not damaging your um, your finish but so i've worked out with mine mine's four um from the, the factory setting so that's still on four out from the factory setting so um so from full anti-clockwise mine's four turns clockwise so i worked out with pete's so his is actually six turns from full anti-clockwise so I've worked that out and to me I think so does that make it softer I don't know maybe I'll have to have a look into that a bit more I did try and prep this so anyway onwards and upwards so on the compression it's boiling hot today by the way I'm dripping sweat it's like 30 something degrees already and um, from the compression that's uh, standard is 16 um, anti-clockwise so 16, that's clicks on the compression, and uh, he's down 15. And on the rebound, he's it's there's a massive change on the rebound. He's six clicks out on the rebound, but the uh, the, the factory is 14. 
So that will be an interesting one. I really, really, I'm hoping all things being well. The rumour is we'll be allowed out from the 11th, which is next Monday. So, you know, I just can't wait to get out, but I'm sure everybody else is in the same boat. I was watching a video from um, um, one of the American guys that's just picked his up. He's got number 007, um, and, uh, and obviously he's got the red highlights on the American bike, which I liked, and I think I wouldn't mind him having a choice of that. But actually, maybe I've got used to this because I've re-looked at it again. And he's got the Moto 2 at the back. You'll, you'll see the American designs if you search on the internet. The chap's had this for about a month and he picked his up. Love it. He came out the dealer and he's not bothering running it in. He's already like, <laughs> already twisting the throttle on it. But um, it's something ninja. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, if you, you know, obviously we still haven't got many videos about this bike. So if you put Daytona 765 Moto 2, it will come up. Um, but he said he's not going to baby his, he's just going to, you know, vary the revs, but he's not going to bother with the running in process. Um, and it amazed me because he picked it up in San Diego, I think it was, um, and they give him a choice of number, so he got 007, which is a dead cool number, isn't it? Um, but he got number 007. Man, they've now started drilling over the road. Oh. Anyway. We'll see if this turns out. If it's too big on the audio, then I'll, then I'll have to do this again. Um, but anyway, let's get back to this for a second, because yeah, as you know, I get sidetracked easily. So on the rear, on the rear, he's uh, 14 clicks on compression and 14 on rebound. The standard is 16 and 16. So um, again, so it looks like they've softened up the rear uh, just a little bit. They haven't touched the preload, interestingly, um, but. So that will give you, uh, but it's easy if you just read Pete's comments on one of my videos. But I just thought I'd give it a try and uh, and just to see how many total total clicks of, or total turns we've got as adjustment on the on the front. Um, now, saying about his roads, again with a front heavy rider on these roads, it's good to have all that adjustment because that does you know to keep the comfort level up. But it's, um, a, you know, that'll be a nice, you know, uh, really make it a lot flusher on the on the crappy roads he has to ride on. Um, I was going to do a bit on cars actually and midlife crisis. Let me turn around this way. My old knees are going. I oh, just thought I'd show you what I'll use, what I've been using. So try not to damage anything. I've got a bit of t-shirt and put that on. That didn't work. The 17, which I ended up using in the end anyway for the pre-load. And the tape that I tried around it. And the nice short little IKEA adjustable, just to give me a little bit more room so I can get more turns out taken off. But uh, as I say, didn't work. Where can you get a touch-up pen for blue anodized for Olin's? Anyway. Um, yeah, so I was going to do a bit on um, cars, really. I know I normally do bits on bikes, uh, where it's all about this this bike. But I've been fortunate enough before I had kids to to have a job that was um, that uh, didn't cost me a lot to to live. Uh, it was back in the days of Pesetas and uh, and Lira. But I was lucky enough to live in Tenerife and um, Mallorca and. Uh, um, and Italy, but um, I was fortunate enough to get some nice cars. I'll, I'll pop them on the end of the video. Um, but I noticed the price of the cars. I had a um, Ferrari 348 and a Porsche 993, and the, the prices of those back when I got them were, I think, the, well, the Ferrari ended up selling 2008 for 19 grand. They're about 50 grand now, and the 993 had two of those. I had a coupe and a convertible. Um, and um, talk about midlife crisis and stuff like that. Uh, I was actually, when the house price went up in England, I was living in Italy, um, and I'm one of, the, unbelievably, my mates still can't believe I did it, but I sold my house in England, made a bit of a profit, and I went out and bought the two cars that I've just mentioned. Um, and uh, uh, so really, that's how, how much of a petrol I am, and how stupid I am when it comes to cars, bikes, and everything else. But. I see the price of these things going up, and I think to myself, they're not that 
good, you know. Um, so, like everybody, I've been spending ages uh, watching some great stuff on on YouTube uh, in the States and also back in the UK. Uh, but I thought, I thought, well, you know, I'll, um, if you want to, I'll give you a reality check. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that maybe they didn't start their their kids like they started their kids life a bit earlier, and they're probably getting to the stage now where they may be freeing up a bit of money, nearly finished their mortgages and considering buying themselves something like that that they've always wanted. But I'd just say um, it's not sour grapes or anything because I haven't got them anymore. And you look back on rose tint with rose tinted specs, but um, but stick to, stick to the bikes. If you can get a nice bike rather than spend the money on something else, then, you know, then um, I would definitely do that because it's a lot easier to look after and a lot cheaper as well. So, uh, I'll, I'll just grab the camera now and just show you what a mess I've made of my bolts, uh, or oh, sorry, my top nut. If anybody wants to give me some tips on how not to do that and um, what I should have done before I made a bit of a mess of it, that would be great. Um, and uh, I just want to get out. You know, I've been meaning, meaning to do something on video wise, but I've just got, uh, unfortunately, I've got no footage that I can put up. I've used the bike to go out of the bank twice, and one time there was a police roadblock just down the road. Luckily enough, it w was literally um, two kilometres from the house to go out of the bank and back again. So, but uh, oh, it's just so nice to get on the bike, wasn't it? So, again, I always say it, but I hope everybody's been safe because, you know, I know a lot of people aren't being, and you know who you are. But um, really, you know, we've got, we've got to consider ourselves really lucky if we're. And, uh, and hopefully all your families are safe and everything else. But as I say, not an awful lot to go to go out with you today, but um, fingers crossed that we get back on the bikes and, uh, and I'll have something to bring to you um, as soon as I get out. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if I'm probably asking for it, but if they say we can go out next Monday, um, on Sunday night at 11.50, I'll be getting the bike warmed up and uh, come midnight, I'll, I'll, even if it means just going down the motorway and back and um, getting out on the bike. And uh, Alright, so look after yourselves guys and I'll see you next time.